This is the Roland MC101, and we all know it's great for house music, but will it jungle? What is up greedy guys, it's your boy Big Umami and today we're back with yet another installment of Will It, a series in which I pick one particular groove box to see how good it is for producing one particular genre of music. And today's episode is a very special one because for the very first time in the illustrious history of this series I'm actually responding to a special request from one of you, my lovely subscribers. So Liu Chakwan, sorry for Thank you for your request, I shall oblige. Let's start with the drums. You probably already know this, but unlike house music, which generally uses single shots like these, Jungle, much like early hip-hop, uses old breaks that have been sliced up into different pieces. Surely you've heard of the Amen break, or the Think break, or the Soul break. The problem is that you can't really slice breaks on the MC101. Fortunately though, I have some of my favorite breaks already sliced up and loaded in the SD card that comes with the unit. After importing these slices, it's important to put them in a mute group. If we don't do this, they will overlap, because their original tempo is much slower than the one that we're using for this song. So I'm gonna put all the slices from the drum break in mute group number one. Also, I'm gonna turn the pitch up to semitones on the drum break sounds, in order to get that classic jungle sound. Press shift plus sound to get into the sound editing menu. And it's called key offset for whatever reason, but yeah. In order to give some more oomph and support to these breaks, we also import some single shots. A kick, a snare, open and closed hi-hats. By the way, you can find these samples in my sample pack Big Umami Bombs Volume 1 at bigumami.com, link in the description box below. Oh, and I almost forgot, but we also need to put the two hi-hats in a different mute group. We want them to choke each other out, but still be able to play them over the sliced breaks. So we're gonna put them in mute group two. Cool, now that we have a nice drum pattern, let's get some chords in. One of the best features about the MC101 is Chord Designer. To access it, press No twice, then Shift plus Filter. I really want to get to showing you the presets on this machine, so I'm gonna fly through this part of building the chords, but if you're interested in exploring chord designer further, I made a full video about it and you can find it right here. Right, I've got some chords and now the really fun part begins. The MC101 has an absolute metric f ton of presets, and a lot of them are on the cheesy side, but in a good way, in a 90s jungle kind of way, which is exactly what we're going for today. Alright, let's commit to this one and let's punch these chords in. Now let's move to the bass. 
The selection here is not as high quality as for the parts presets, but realistically I only need a sub -E type bass sound. I mean, even a simple sine wave could do, but you know, this preset actually sounds good. Let's quickly add a bell type sound. Let me just pause for a second to say, if you're enjoying what you're hearing right now, well, I've got great news for you. In fact, I have an atmospheric jungle album under my moniker, Tomato Breaks, that you can listen in full for free right here on YouTube. Or if you really wanna throw some money at me, you can download it in high quality on Bandcamp. All the links in the description box below. Let's get back to it. So, any jungle tune worth its salt needs some kind of a build-up and most build-ups need a riser. Fortunately, under this small and unassuming hood, there's actually a pretty powerful synth engine with four oscillators, two envelopes, two LFOs, and so much more. So let's try and use that to make our riser. But now you're probably asking yourself, you've used one track for the drums, one for the pad, one for the bass, one for the melody, where are we gonna put this riser effect? Well, the MC-101 works with something called clips, and they're like clips in Ableton, with the exception that for each clip, you can actually change the sound preset, which is just very, very, very convenient. For this particular reason of the song, we don't really need the bass. So let's hold shift and press track three. We go to sound source, click, and instead of track, we'll select clip. Now, when you do this, unfortunately, it kind of deletes uh, the preset that you were using, but fortunately, I actually remember which one it is. So let me just go back quickly and save it again. And now we can go to the new clip and make a sound from scratch. So oscillator one, we're gonna use a simple sawtooth wave. Oscillator two, we'll use some white noise. Then we're gonna use the LFOs to affect the pitch, cutoff, volume. We're gonna sync the LFO and make it four bars long. We're gonna select so up. And on paper, this is all good and fine, but when I play it in the sequencer, it doesn't seem to be tracking correctly here. So we're gonna need a different approach. Let's try and record some motion. The problem is, motion only works on the four control knobs. And this filter knob right here doesn't control my filter, rather it controls a generic filter on the main track. So I'm gonna need to change that to Sys1. We then go to the sound editor, go to the matrix and assign Sys1 to the filter's cutoff. Now let's try and record the motion. All right, this is not really working either. It always seems like it's bugging out, it's not really uh, syncing correctly to the main tempo. And so on any other machine, I should be at the end of the rope here, but fortunately the MC-101 has a thing called Motion Designer, which, you know, designs your motions for you. Pretty convenient. So we're gonna set it like this. Length, 32 steps. Min value, zero. Max value, 127. Destination, filter knob. works awesome the only thing we forgot was to also automate the pitch of the soul wave and for this we're gonna need yet another workaround we need to assign the mod knob to pitch bend then we need to go to sound settings navigate to pitch range and select 24 now we're gonna repeat the motion designer process following the same steps but the destination now will be mod Okay, that's done. And since we have so many cool pad sounds, for track two, I'm actually gonna use the ability to switch between different presets in different parts of the song, just like I did for the bass. So the notes are gonna stay the same, but the sound will change. A 
then I'll probably end up using just a couple of these but it's nice to have different choices in your clips. Great, so now we have different clips for all the different tracks. Drums in track one. Pads in track two. bass and riser in track 3 and melody in track 4 on the MC-101 we can actually arrange all of those clips in scenes and build up a whole song to do that you just select the clips you want to play press and hold clip and press and hold the scene pad you want to write to then to recall it you hold clip and tap the scene that you want to play. Great, I think I'm done. Uh, now let's have a little jam switch in between scenes and using the scatter feature as well to add a little spice. now time for my favorite section let's vote let's talk about usability first I've said it before and I'll say it again core designer is an absolute godsend of a feature brilliant work by Roland great job the arrangement tools uh, such as clips and scenes on this machine are particularly well thought out as well especially when you think that clips can actually be really long like eight bars long which is not something that you typically find in other groove boxes even much more expensive also the fact that individual clips within tracks can actually have their own sounds because it makes it sound as if the MC-101 actually has more than four tracks which is you know all you can play at one time and yes the LFO and motion recording thing you know kind of bugging out are very annoying and I hope that Roland actually fixes them because I found some of these problems on the SP404 MK2 as well but in the meantime albeit with some annoying workarounds I actually managed to make it work using the excellent motion designer which works quite well the only real feature missing from this machine in order to make it perfect for jungle and drum and bass is actually the ability to slice breaks but I mean there are free editors that can do that you know with a bit of legwork beforehand on your computer uh, 
you know, you can make it work. It's not a big deal in my opinion. So all in all, I'm gonna give usability a fat nine. Let's talk about the sound. Now, one thing that people criticize Roland for is the fact that some or many of their presets uh, how can I say it nicely? Uh, quite cheesy, sometimes general MIDI sounding, shall I say? The great thing is that for this particular genre, the f perfect. There are so many presets that you'll never ever run out of ideas if you're making this type of music. And I know what you're gonna say, what you did today was some kind of, you know, atmospheric, you know, 90s jungle, which is not the entirety of drum and bass. What if I wanna make some, I don't know, some more modern stuff, like some neurofunk or something? Well, to that I say that, you know, the patch editor, uh, buggy LFO notwithstanding, is actually quite powerful. You can use that to create some cool stuff, I promise you. And I'll make a video focusing on just that later on. Is it gonna be the same as using Vital or Massive or Serum in a DAW? where you can actually stack some VSTs on top as well. Of course not. But I mean, look at the size of this thing. They still managed to squeeze the entire Zencore engine in it. It is pretty impressive. So for these reasons, I'm gonna give the sound a full 10, which brings the total to a 9.5 score. Is it the first time for this show? I don't know, I don't care, I love this thing. And so, what do you think about it? Did I go too high with this machine? Did I get caught up in the hype or something? Which there is none for it, because it came out a few years ago. But, I don't know, let me know, let me know in the comments below. Also, in the comments below, let me know what genre and groove box should I review next. And yeah, I love you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Please go to my uh, bigumami.com website to get some cool sample packs. Please uh, buy or stream my Tomato Breaks album, which is, you know, a jungle album. And yeah, all of that. See you later, yeah?